Reynolds obviously been a significant week for the footy club with the departure of Mark Neal. What have you made of it in the last few days? Um, yeah, well, it's uh, it's disappointing that um, uh, we're in this position that in terms of our on-field form. But, yeah, I understand. I've um, been totally aware that Mark's been working on his MBA and um, exploring those sort of options, business management options. Um, so I support his decision. Was, was he the scapegoat at all? Um, no, I don't think so. But, uh, you know, I, I work really closely with Mark and really enjoyed working with him. And he's got a, a huge amount to offer both um, football administration or general business world with um, with his character. So, If you had it your way, would he still be the club? Uh, I'm, I'm part of the club, so we're all in it together. And, um, yeah, I support, you know, the pathway Mark's taking. Did he have ultimate say, John, over the way the team played tactically? No. So it just seems strange that the head tactician of the club has departed at a time where you've admitted you're disappointed to and So six. he's not the head tactician. So he's the head of performance Game strategy, performance. performance? Yeah. Is that not strategy? No, that's planning training programs. Um, uh, yeah, mapping out a lot more things than just game strategy, supporting me in implementing our strategies. So, I mean, if that's the case, um, I guess we've heard reports, you can confirm what I'm with yourself, um, that inside the coach's box, he, he was the only one that could talk to you and uh, he was yeah. always a conduit? Is that? That's wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. 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 Were there communication issues at all, though, John? I mean, aside from that? In what regard? In regards to, to Mark and the assistant coaches? Um, not that I was aware of. There was a lot of communication. We, we meet daily, so plenty of communication there. Um, so I'm not really sure. You need to be more specific. Are you talking coaches' box, day-to-day? -day? Well, I mean, all-encompassing, but I mean, the coaches' box was mentioned, but it was, it was also mentioned that as... By whom? Well... It has been mentioned. By whom? Well, in the media. So By whom? Well, everyone that's everyone. involved, yeah. So who? Uh, this is, well, obviously no one, club, no one from Clubland. What's your Clubland. question? Well, the, it was to do with communication. Um, what's I mean, your question? The, is there communication as, at, to the standard that you would like? Between whom? Between the coaches. No, yeah, it's all, all good. The head of footy, Dan Richardson, um, said in the last few days that this is an opportunity for there to be more clarity amongst you and your coaches with the way that you want to play. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, look, um, times of uh, great challenge open up plenty of opportunities, yeah. And um, wise people would use that opportunity to learn and grow. So your CEO said that you're not playing the way that you want to play. So how much of an impact did Mark have on them say on the way that you wanted to play and how much of that yeah, change Mark now? was part of our overall team of coaches and uh, players and staff on um, how we wanted to play. So you, given um, that uh, you know, you, the situation you're in, you've just lost, you know, it's only eight games into the season, you've just lost to the worst team. Can you sort of see how it can be? You're saying Carlton are the worst team? Well, on the ladder, they were heading to the, that game, they were 18th yeah, sure, on seven. That's so thing. statistically, yep. yeah. Um, and so I guess... Can you see how it can be viewed that he, he's been made a scapegoat? Uh, I can't control perceptions of other people and I can't control um, how people want to write things. People will put things into context that, to angle it the way they want to. Um, so I'm fully supportive of uh, Mark's decision. You know, I consider him a friend and uh, I'm wrapped with everything he's done to support me over my time at the SM Footy Club. And, um, I'll continue to support him in whichever pathway he goes. Do you anticipate that your team will play differently now? Um, if by differently you mean are we going to improve, that's our absolute aim, to improve. Would it change the way tactically you set up or the way you defend or the way you um, That's a possibility regardless of whether Mark was here or not. With um, movement in coaching boxes, people sort of start talking about senior coaching jobs. Yeah. Um, how are you sort of feeling about the pressure that you might be under? Do you think that you know you, your job could be in trouble? Um, in what way? As in you, that you could be moved on? Or how um, are you sort of feeling about that? I'm really confident in my communication with the board and, uh, and Xavier at this footy club that uh, we're not happy with where we're at but we're on a clear pathway to where we want to get to and uh, we've all got clear roles to play in, in achieving that so 
I see a club that's pretty strongly aligned and really focused on um, doing the hard work to get to where we want to get to. So you feel safe? Um, I'm, I'm, in your job, they aren't going to move you on? Do I, f I feel like we're aligned, yeah. all on the same page with where we want to head and what we're trying to achieve. John, you talked about after the game, you just mentioned that um, being strong, strongly aligned. After the game you talked about, it's an opportunity for the players to work out what they want to stand for and the brand that they want to play. Have you spoken about that in the last couple of days? Have you had more clarity with the players on what you want that brand to be? Uh, yes, we have, yeah. It's uh, um, been great discussions around that. And, you know, when you dig into it, basically it becomes just a bit more of a narrow focus. Um, not something new, not something too different, just more of a narrow focus on, on what they want to achieve. And did you want that to be player-driven? That's how it felt like you were talking after the game? Or is it something that well, you Well, yeah, look, in the history to... of... Um, of all the great teams that I've ever read about or been involved with, um, the great teams are player-led, the good teams are coach-led, the great teams are player-led, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, so that was so we want to be a great team. There was criticism after the game I think, from um, likes of Matthew Lloyd and, and yep. Campbell Brown talking about that they would anticipate that it should be coach-driven. Yeah. All these are the great teams. Well, yeah, again, that's all the great teams, the people who have been part of great teams, say that it's player led player accountability to each other player focus driven um, is great teams so that's my opinion Lloydy thinks maybe the other way but I'm, all I'm telling you is um, yeah I've heard a lot of good teams say they had they were coach led but the great teams have been player led so why did it take Sorry, to, why did it take to round 8 to have to clarify what the team's trademark is um, it's been narrowing the focus. The team know how they want to play. They're very, very clear on that. Um, but uh, they're frustrated because we haven't played that well. Um, so they just wanted to narrow the focus. Is it, Will Jake Stringer play this week, John? Um, yeah, possibly, he, yeah. You know, he had some back stiffness. How much is that affecting the way he's been playing at the moment? Um, I can't answer that exactly, but uh, he's in line for selection, yes. The Bagley and Lamb sledging incident, what did you make of it? My understanding is that Lamb sledged Baggers and Baggers responded with a uh, sledge as well, um, which had nothing to do with what, um, from what I understand, the don't re really want to bring up what Jed's family's been through, but a lot of other people were happy to bring it up. Um, but it was nothing to do with that. So it should never have been part of the conversation. But some people wanted to make it part of it because maybe for those journalists it's a sexy line to write. But if Mark Bagley had no idea of it, it's um, pretty hard that he would possibly comment on it. So Jed Lamb actually told Carlton officials about it. So it's hard to say it's media driven, John. No, I'm just telling you if Mark Bagley did not know anything about it, yep. he couldn't have commented on it. Yep. Do you, do you think he crossed the line, Mark? I don't know what he said. Yes, you haven't talked to him about what was said? No, I, d I only heard about it last night, Right. to be honest. Um, it wasn't an issue for us here because I hadn't heard about it. Um, all I can go in on is what, uh, what Mark has come out. He was quite upset the way it was reported. Yep. Um, so Jed made a personal insult to Baggers and uh, got an, an insult back. So you know what was said from Jed to Mark? No, I don't. But you know it was personal? Well, I read it was personal, but I don't know what it was. Right. Yeah. Do, you Isn't that, do you know what it was? Yep. Was it personal? Yep. Thanks. Do you have coffee with Gillan McLaughlin? No. Do you think that... Well, <laughs> I do at coach breakfast, not individually. How did you see Gillan and Clarko having coffee? I didn't know they did. They did and apparently talked tactics with videos and now there's a memo about blocking. How do you feel about it? Are they related? So you're asking me to comment on something that you don't even know if they're related. Is that do right? Do you think they could be related? I don't know. Do you think I was there? I can't comment on what... Uh, look, I've got no drama with um, a coach having a coffee with another stakeholder in the game. John, so, you, you, I'm, uh, world's not going to tip upside down. 
John, you're showing great faith in your playing group. All Absolutely. Year. Um, yep. will, will that continue this week? Or Absolutely, will, it will. In terms at the selection table, will we? Absolutely, it will. Yeah. So not many changes this week. That doesn't mean no changes. No, absolute faith in my playing group at the selection table because in my playing group we have players playing in the VFL, and yep. they'll be given absolute faith as well. So let me clarify. Yeah, I mean the, the 22. So so there's a good chance. So there would be a chance of maybe more for unforced changes this week than usual. What if there were six force changes? Well, there would be injuries, wouldn't it? They would be, yeah. Yeah. So, so would, would we make eight? Do you want changes over and above force changes? Do they make a difference to you? Oh, yeah, I'm assuming yeah. there's no injuries. Yeah. yeah. Assuming there's no injuries. Well, you know there's one. There's one. Is it? Uh, no, I'm saying assuming there is no injuries. Is Hurley injured? Yeah. yeah. Did you know that? I did know that. You just said you didn't know that. <laughs> has a you conversation... Got <laughs> you got me on the spot there. Sorry. No, <laughs> has, has the conversation around the club been unfair with, with all the different issues, with the communication, with the talk of whether it's being player or coach-driven, the direction of the club? Is that conversation as a whole unfair on what's happening behind closed doors, the stuff we don't know about? Is it unfair? It's, look, it's fair that everyone can have their own opinion. So from outside, uh, everyone's loving their comments. You know, Everyone loves to say that. Uh, good teams are coach-led. Um, I say great teams are player-led. Uh, everyone's got their own opinion. I, I may be wrong. Matthew Lloyd may be right. Um, so that's that's fine. Like what we're doing here is uh, getting total alignment from board down through the playing group on committing to where we want to get to. That's it, guys. Thanks, John. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>